right, hello wine drinking people. We are back. Today is Friday, October 1st, and we've got an incredible lineup of events for you this month of October. Tonight we will be taking down the Hamon. That's right, folks, along with all the vintage Spanish wine. So if anybody's hungry for Hamon, we'll have some at the Bordeaux tasting uh, next Tuesday night and again at the Las Pineda event next Friday, if you like the Hamon de Serrano. All right, well, what did I have to drink yesterday? Yesterday we had a pretty good day in the store. Uh, pretty good day means two to three suppliers, you know, 15, 20 wines in that realm. So let's get to it here. We had a small company, a new company to this market, Unfined and Unfiltered. And uh, these guys brought me, uh, Harley, their rep brought me some pretty interesting Spanish stuff. Um, a Gewürztraminer from Spain, something you, you don't see too often, from Vina Albares from Castilla y Leon, the central region. And uh, this has got some lovely fresh lychee nut fruit, peach, and a uh, lovely perfume floral note, one of the things that Gewürztraminer is known for, and that's white peppery spicy note you get also. And uh, not over the top. Some Gewürztraminers can be really perfumey, a little oily even on the palate. This wine had lovely freshness and balance, and uh, a nice little wine, a nice little Gewürztraminer. Um, 33 bucks. Well, not cheap, but pretty good. Next up, we had some wines from Toro. Toro is the region that is just to the south and to the west of Rivera del Duero. This is a region where they also grow Tempranillo. They call it Tinto de Toro there. And these wines were all uh, made with that varietal 100%. And uh, these wines were pretty good. The entry level wine, the Luis Abelis. Um, well, the kind of labeling on this wine was a little bit difficult like a lot of Spanish wines the name of the actual bodega not very clear you gotta look on the back and the fine print to see it's produced and bottled by Luis and William wines and then this wine is Louis and then they have a William so like I said not the best packaging I've seen but Spain is known for that the entry level wine was very nice had that typical um, kind of uh, dried herbs meats and certain animal quality that you get from uh, Tempranillo and then that lovely bright red berry fruit also really nice uh, host of exotic spice and uh, a, a nice uh, balance on the finish and then next up we had the William this is kind of the, the next uh, the next guy up in the line of things in the chain of command this is uh, <clears throat> a little bit later picked a little bit better selection and a little bit more of that gamey quality to the nose there a little bit more concentration a good deal of wild strawberry and kind of rhubarb like fruit to the nose a nice concentration and depth on the palate with lovely brown spices and a kind of a sun-dried character to the fruit on the palate. All right, a little longer finish and definitely a little step up in quality here. And then uh, the next wine, which was, uh, well, they got this wine on sale, man. It's the same price as the William 2004 Vintage Fighting Bulls. This is their top wine. They just make a few hundred cases of this, a hundred plus year old vines. Wow, this wine was all that and a box of chocolates. Very intense and uh, lovely raw venison kind of gamey character to the nose, like incense, exotic spice, and uh, really lovely uh, richness on the palate also. You could tell this wine needs a bit of time. Like I said, it's got a, a lot of going on here, a lot of tannins, but still wonderful acidity, great concentration, and uh, most excellent. Wow, we'll probably be bringing this wine in the store next week. As I said, the regular price is 65 bucks, but they've got it on sale for the same price as the William. 3750 will be able to offer it at. Wow. Okay, next up, we had a wine from the Priorat. Priorat, one of my favorite areas in Spain, just south of Barcelona, about an hour. And you have Carignan and Grenache, are the stars here. This wine was a blend of those two varietals along with a little Cabernet Sauvignon. A bit of a black tar and slate kind of note. You get this lovely slate minerality to the wines of the pre-rot. They call the soil there licorel. And uh, you notice that in the nose, a little mocha uh, also, kind of a spice quality there. And some lovely ripe black cherry liqueur fruit. One of the things I love about the pre-rot is that lovely ripe fruit that you get. Really nice and chewy on the th uh, tongue with lovely kind of potpourri and flower notes on the finish. All right, next up we had Omar from Gallery Wines. He had one champagne, a smaller producer, Louis de Sassi. And this for a lighter style champagne was very nice. And if you want to check this out, we'll have it at our champagne tasting on November 20th. All right, then a good friend from Swanson Vineyard, Shelly, stopped by with the new releases. Swanson, one of our good friends from Oakville. Oakville, to me, is the sweet spot in Napa, almost right dead smack in the center. A lot of the great properties from Napa Valley located there. Opus One Winery, hey, the Cabernet Vineyard, right behind Opus Vineyard on the Oakville Crossroad from Swanson that they use in their Alexis. This is a winery that's been on the forefront, kind of on the uh, buzz of what's been happening and changing. When Clark's changed from Chardonnay to Pinot Grigio, that varietal kind of took off. Hey, his first uh, love was Merlot, and Andre Chelichev, his consultant when he planted these vineyards, or bought 
bought these vineyards uh, told him you need to plant Merlot here. His largest production still to this date is Merlot. And uh, a fantastic Merlot, the best value coming out of Napa Valley. And this is a Merlot for Cabernet drinkers. Although you do get a difference in fruit with Merlot, you got this lovely sweet plum fruit. This wine has got some substance to it too. Even though it doesn't have this tannic structure of Cabernet Sauvignon, it still has wonderful acidity, wonderful freshness, and this lovely toasty oak quality. You're not going to mistake this for a Bordeaux. Lovely ripe fruit, lovely toasty oak, lovely balance, and lovely freshness on the finish. Swanson Merlot, our perennial winner for best Merlot in its price category from Napa Valley. The Alexis, well the Alexis, one of the great wines made in Napa. And I'm glad they took the Syrah out of it. This is uh, something you don't see a lot of high-end wines from Napa containing Syrah. So you see some more drinkable stuff. They're starting to add it into the $20 wines, but the top, top level stuff Cabernet, Merlot, you know, Bordeaux varietals, you know, all of the big, big money wines coming out of Napa today. The Alexis, this 2006, maybe a little bit tannic. It needs a little bit of time to come around. A lot of the 06s are like that, but this wine has got everything that it takes to be another long-lived and great vintage for Alexis. So it just may need a little time to come around. All right, and then one more supplier for the day. Dave Roberts, a man with two first names, stopped in with our new best friend from Bobby Catcher. All right, first up, we had a wine from the Brunel family, the 2007 Lake Cayo Chateauneuf de Pop. This is a wine, uh, well, this is the white wine from uh, Chateauneuf de Pop. You do, a lot of producers make a little bit of white wine. This wine's a blend of Claret, uh, Grenache Blanc, and Roussan. And as the uh, vines are dying, they're replanting this vineyard, these vineyards with the Roussan, so it may eventually turn out to be 100% Roussan. Usually, uh, you get a little bit of a black kind of licorice anise note to this wine. This wine kind of reminded me of beer when I put it up to my nose. You know, it could have been all the Lee's contact that they give this wine, uh, but a really unique kind of bouquet, uh, honeycomb, lemon lime, citrus, and uh, white peach fruit. A lovely texture on the tongue, this 07 vintage, an outstanding vintage in the Southern Rhone. I know you've had me, heard me touting this if you've been watching this show. If you don't have 07s in your cellar from the Southern Rhone, what are you waiting for, man? They're still around. You can still get them. Don't wait for another 6, 12 months. They're not going to be here. Hey, the 09s will. Don't worry, man. Another great vintage, but you're going to have to wait that much longer for those wines to come around in your cellar. All right, next up, a wine from the Cote de Ventoux, the Domaine de Fondreche Nadal. Uh, this wine had lovely fresh berry pie fruit. One of the things I love about the wines from the south of France, the Cote de Ventoux being just south of the Cote de Rhone, and uh, uh, lovely fresh herbs and flowers. This is a term the French call garrigue. Wonderful concentration in this wine. Just reminds me of the south of France when I put my nose in the glass. Smooth and polished on the palate with lovely silky tannins and raspberry and cranberry-like fruit. Really exotic. The best value of the day, $27. I think we have the 03 vintage of this wine on the shelf. Next up, the Brunel Chateauneuf de Pop Le Caillou uh, Rouge. Uh, this is their top Chateauneuf de Pop and a wonderful wine. The wine may be a little bit closed in right now. Maybe it needs a little bit of time to come around in the bottle, but it had a lovely concentration, this lovely wild game character to it, sun-dried cherry and plum fruit, and a lovely richness, a full bouquet on the nose. On the palate, a little bit hard-edged, maybe a little austere. The fruit not really expressive at this point. Maybe just need a little time to air out. I don't know how they long they were had this bottle open but you can tell this wine's got potential for greatness i would hold it back in your cellar for at least another three five years or more though okay last up we had the uh, domaine font michel etienne gonet cuvee one of my favorite chatting up the pops from catcher this etienne gonet 130 year old vineyard 70 percent grenache 30 percent mouvedre uh syrah cunois and cinso it's a field blend Wow, man, you put your nose in this glass and the aromas just jump right out at you. Very seductive, sun-dried black cherry fruit, black currant, exotic spices, floral notes, espresso, mocha. Wow, incredible concentration on the tongue as well. Uh, this wine, most excellent. And it's not crazy expensive. It's only like $78. It's much as this wants an Alexis. All right, next up, we had a wine from the Northern Rome. I'm sorry, that wasn't the last one. The Michelle and Stephanie Ogier Cote Roti. You put your nose in this glass, and man, you know you've moved from the south to the north in the Rhone Valley. Lovely black pepper spice, graphite minerality, uh, really black plum, fresh herbs, uh, really incredible intoxicating bouquet on the nose here. And uh, it's a blend of 75% from the Cote 
Brune, Blonde at 25 cent from the Cote Brune, the two major areas in the Cote Roti area, and a lovely concentration on the palate as well. A big wine, this 07. Also needs time, but it's got wonderful balance and freshness. You note that graphite minerality coming through on the finish as well. Most excellent, and it should be at $113.75. All right, folks, that's what I had to drink yesterday. I'm your host, Andrew Lampazone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.